Hi, this is uh, Kalyan Karmakar here and apologies if you joined earlier and, and got disconnected. There were some issues with the uh, internet signal and uh, for people who uh, will be listening or watching to this later, well, I do these series of podcasts uh, using Instagram live initially and then I share it on my other social media channels. So you can hopefully catch it now and if not, uh, then later. Well, I'm broadcasting, you, broadcasting to you from uh, Mumbai and uh, in, in Bandra where I stay and, and it's a, a slightly wet and moist uh, evening over here. It was raining uh, a bit earlier and as uh, some of you probably know, we have a cat called Baby Cat, uh, Baby Loaf and uh, he's still getting used to the rain. So in the initial uh, rains happened, he would come in and sort of be inside the house and s snuggle up and uh, you know be on the cushions and whatnot. But the last couple of times he likes to be in the box window uh, box window and he now goes out there so today we try to t tell him to come in when it is raining because he'll catch a cold but but he's out there well um, as you know I've been doing a series of broadcasts under Foodocracy India and that's what I'm going to do today and hashtag Foodocracy India is a hashtag which I've started uh, for us to talk about our favorite eateries uh, across the country whether they're cafes street food joints family run institutions uh, you know or, or new places or, or what not and if, if it's a place where you like to eat at uh, then uh, please use the hashtag Foodocracy India use whichever social media you're comfortable with and share uh, the story of that place because I think what the restaurant industry needs right now or everyone in the food business is a bit of our support and a bit of our uh, goodwill now um, like I said I'll be sharing this later in, in uh, my other social media channels so it won't be live at that point which is why um, I will not be able to take all comments uh, or, or wave back or say hi to you in between this Instagram live uh, broadcast. But I'll do that uh, to the, towards the end. And uh, especially if you have any memories or comments on uh, the place we are going to talk about today, then please uh, type in and I'm going to read them out uh, towards the end. Like I told you, it's, it's been a wet uh, evening in uh, Mumbai and it's a bit, uh, it was cloudy and it was raining a bit weather's pleasant and it suddenly reminded me uh, and I took a little afternoon nap and and when I woke up it reminded me of two years back when I'd gone to Bangalore uh, Mangalore with an M mind you not not Bangalore or, or Bengaluru so this was in July 2018 and I had gone there on a food trip I think one of the first times I'd gone on a dedicated food trip and I have a friend Dr. Pradeep Rao who is uh, from Mumbai but his parents are of uh, are Mangaloreans He's grown up here, of course. He's born here, and and he's a, he's a he's a big foodie, a big man, and um, and and he was going to Mangalore at that time to pick up his uh, wife and kids who'd gone there for the summer holidays. So he was going to pick them up and bring them back to Mumbai. So he told me that why don't you join me and we'll do a trip together. So we we flew off uh, at different times. I flew off a bit early in the evening that evening, and and Pradeep flew in later. And we both checked into a hotel called uh, Ocean Pearl and, and we took rooms over there. Uh, it's supposed to be one of the newest and best hotels in uh, Mangalore and it was quite a nice uh, place in terms of uh, you know, the location and, and comfort and all of that. Um, so uh, that's where we were. And uh, I was very keen to go to Mangalore because uh, uh, you know, what I've realized over the years is that Mumbai is a city which I live in. Uh, I've been here for the last 20 years. Um, a big influence on the food uh, culture and, and the restaurant industry of Mumbai and probably the rest of India as well, but Mumbai in particular uh, comes from Mangalore. So there's a certain community, um, you know, they, they call the Shetties and um, they were the ones who started setting up uh, eateries in Mumbai in the 1960s and 50s uh, in, in a couple of decades after uh, Indian independence. So. The restaurant movement in Mumbai per se started in the mid 1800s when uh, the Iranis uh, came o came over from uh, from Persia and, and they set up the Irani cafe. So before that, there were no restaurants in Mumbai. So there's just khanawals where there were stands and, and, and for travelers to come and eat. But eating out was not really a part of the culture from what I understand. Then the Irani cafes happened and they sort of ruled Rus from the mid 1800s till um, like I said, about 1940-1960, so about a century of, of run. And, and then things started changing in the years after independence. So as, as the Iranian cafes began to flourish, the second and third generation was not so keen on uh, running the place and they wanted to get into white collar 
uh, businesses or jobs and, and migrate out of India. And, and then came uh, people from Mangalore, uh, people from the Shetty community, who opened up small um, eateries in, in Mumbai, you know, small places serving uh, vegetarian South Indian food like uh, idli, dosa, and, and so on, vada. And, and influenced uh, also by the food of Udipi, which is uh, pretty close to Mangalore. In fact, during my trip, I'd gone to Udipi uh, as well. And, um, and, 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 and that's the sort of cuisine which uh, they started serving uh, in Mumbai. And what happened was that um, everyone took to it. So, so the South Indians took to it. There was a strong Tamilian and Keralite uh, population in the city working here. So they took to it. And of course, there were Keralite restaurants as well, but not so many Tamil restaurants. But they took to it, then, um, you know, everyone else in the city, you know, the, the Maharashtrians, the Gujaratis, the Marwaris, they all started taking to the South Indian food on offer because the places were clean. Uh, the food on offer in the beginning was vegetarian, so that's like the lowest common denominator, and, and it was considered to be nutritious and, uh, and not too expensive. And um, then these places began to evolve with time, and, and it was really a community-run uh, initiative. So. Uh, the people who initially opened up uh, the restaurants or eateries in Mumbai, the Mangaloreans, they got in um, people from their community, their relatives and friends uh, to come and work here as, as cooks, as managers and chefs and, and, and whatnot. And, and then there was the local uh, banks also, the Mangalorean banks, uh, who would give, um, like the uh, Kanara Bank for example, and, and they would give, uh, from what I understand, uh, and, and this was a story told to me by Camellia Punjabi, who is a famous restaurateur who was with the Taj group earlier and now she and her sister run a chain of hotels in London. And, and she's very fascinated by the Mangalorean and Shetty community. So she told me that it was, it was such a lovely community initiative. So what happened was people came from Mangalore, set up the restaurants in Mumbai. Then they got people from uh, their native place, as we say in India. Uh, you know, neighbors, friends, family to come and work with them. And uh, then uh, the bank, the Canada Bank also started loans pretty easily. And, uh, and, and that way the businesses started uh, flourishing. And slowly the Irani cafes receded into the background and it was really the Shetty uh, restaurants and, uh, and also uh, some movement from the Chilia community, uh, what's called Chilia in, in Mumbai. So there were the Gujarati Muslims who'd, who'd come in and they'd open the restaurants where a lot of meat-based Mughlai food, so to speak, was uh, sold. You, you get some of them in Mahim, for example, in central Mumbai. I'm talking to you a lot about Mumbai, but I'm going to... Uh, this is my segue to take you uh, to Mangalore in a bit. Well, the Mangalorean places, with time, then decided to um, sort of um, open bars um, and, and they got licenses, liquor licenses. And, and, and when that happened, and, and the business sort of expanded, then they moved into non vegetarian food because that's what goes well with alcohol, right? So, so you know, fried fish and, and uh, spicy curries and, and fried prawns and sometimes even some chicken roast and all that would happen. And all the office folks of Mumbai, the people who worked in Fort and stuff like that, would at the end of the day uh, have their uh, quarter of uh, whiskey or rum and some fried mandeli or, or prawns and or, or some grilled uh, you know bombay duck and, and things and then uh, head back home so you know all, all the famous seafood restaurants of uh, mumbai yeah, which you think of whenever you think of mumbai uh, you know places like trishna mahesh uh, apurva bharat excellency um, ankur a lot of these places in south mumbai which are considered to be the most uh, famous local seafood joints in mumbai where, where you know you take foreign guests over there they all just feature in all tv shows well they're, well, they're not really native Mumbai because, like I said, I mean, they, they, they were set up by Mangalorean uh, folks and, and the food there is more, more Mangalorean. I mean, the closest to native Mumbai food, seafood, which you actually get in Mumbai, they are the places uh, uh, run by the folks from Malwan. So that also is the coast of Maharashtra, not Mumbai. But the Malwani joints, in, uh, which you get in central Mumbai at places like Parel, Dadar, Elphinstone Road, those at least are run by people from Maharashtra, but but uh, the folks, uh, uh, the famous places like Trishna, Mahesh and all that, they were called lunch homes and were run by the Mangalorean folks, still are. And, and if you uh, look around, you might find one or two places like modern lunch home in um, 
fort which which still looks like the olden days lunch home but the others became a lot fancier the most fancy of course is trishna and and where if you go in now i still haven't uh, but if you go in there especially if if you go in with foreigners then they they make you huge crabs and and huge uh, pom frites and and try to make you buy that even at mahesh very very expensive stuff at least if you go to apurva not not so much they don't do that and if you go to the original lunch homes like modern lunch home for example or the other malwani places and uh, you know places like uh, mama kane or uh, say uh, datta lunch home or sindhu dur or raju malwani there you will not have these big crabs and all that because that's not what people eat at home over there is small crabs or small prawns and and that's the sort of food which people at home eat at home but at um places like trishna and all that it's it's more about uh the the glamour and the razmataz and and you know the seafood of of mumbai uh, which which in any case comes from gujarat or goa and doing the rains from uh, andhra pradesh but well well that's that's how we market uh, uh, things even gokul for for people uh, who know gokul bar in kolaba like when when i came in in uh, to mumbai in the late 90s that's the place we used to hang around with for for cheap alcohol before we go to um baremia well gokul is also run by a shetty family and it was originally an idli dosa place set up by someone who'd come at a very young age from mangalore to mumbai and then with time it became a bar and you know the fish fry and all that so even at gokul you get some pretty good mangalorean food is just that no one thinks of that because when you go to gokul you're just looking at your uh, pegs and how many of them you can tumble well that was my segue to take you to mangalore uh, so basically as as i started writing about food i began to understand uh, the importance and influence which mangalore and uh, has had uh, on the food of mumbai mangalorean especially the shetty communities and and uh, since i lived in mumbai uh, i felt that i need to go to mangalore one day so when i got the opportunity to go and join uh, pradeep on his family holiday uh, i i sort of went in because pradeep's someone who knows his uh, food and and he's get uh, uh, company to hang with and and in this podcast what i'm going to talk to you about is uh, a specific place in uh, mangalore uh, it's called the new taj mahal uh, cafe and and that's where i had my first meal in mangalore not with pradeep and i'll tell you why and and that's really where i had my last meal the day before i left or something like that the, the morning when i left and and of all the places um that's the one which is really stuck in my head the most and also when i went to mangalore last year it was uh, doing the monsoons and like i said it's a wet evening and in mumbai so it it reminds me of of that now the new taj mahal cafe has got nothing to do with the taj uh, hotel group in fact mangalore doesn't have a the uh, taj hotel uh, as far as i know so it's it's uh, this place is pretty close to uh, the the ocean pearl the hotel where i was uh, staying at so the central part of uh, of mangalore and um, i i landed there and like i said i reached uh, before pradeep so i took an afternoon flight Pradeep took an evening flight uh, the doctor after after his work and my god apparently when he was up in the air there was a cyclone uh, or or heavy storm happening at at Mangalore and his flight got uh, diverted and Mangalore has a slightly short um, runway and and his flight was eventually diverted to Bangalore but but uh, very late in the night he did come back so we we did continue with our adventure but i was not alone in the first evening in in Mang- mangalore uh, with an m so uh, when i said that i'm going to uh, okay someone sent me the taj gateway uh, gateway is close to mangalore port so so well uh, new taj mahal cafe cafe has got nothing to do with the, with that so when i uh, when i was uh, messaged or tweeted saying that i'm going to mangalore then a few people had reached out to me one was shriya shetty of uh, uh, who's a chef uh, based in mangalore now and and uh, i met her and, uh, couple of days later and when I was there and she's doing some interesting pop ups and all that in Mumbai but another person who reached out to me was Vikram Bondal so Vikram Bondal is not necessarily anyone from the food world or something like that but he's someone whom I've known from the early days of Twitter and and I think I've been on Twitter for more than uh, 10 years now and in the early days of Twitter we also used to sort of connect with each other have a lot of banter chat make friends not like now where everyone's uh, you know got their guns out on Twitter to troll each other and 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 uh, to pontificate and and just to sell stuff twitter was a fun place and and vikram and i belong to that time so vikram said that we must uh, meet in the evening at this place called new taj mahal it's it's very close to your hotel so i reached i i sort of rested in the hotel and and went down 
and and yes it it was new taj mahal is uh, just opposite um, uh, ocean park and now uh, how new is new taj mahal so i later found out that uh, new taj mahal was uh, um, in in 1926 uh or so well, it was uh, wait i'm 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 looking up my blog also but it was uh, opened is is run by someone called ganesh uh, shinoy now um and and he's a fourth generation owner of uh, new taj mahal well, i'm looking into my computer and my blog and i'm going to show you some pictures also as as time goes so ganesh shinoy is the fourth generation owner of uh, new taj mahal uh, cafe and uh, he's related to pradeep rao disclaimers for whatever is worth and uh, and pradeep's uh, from his wife's side and yes to 1926 so so how new does it make so let me do the math 26 to 2000 would be what to 4 uh, 74 and 20 so 94 years old huh? new taj mahal cafe new uh, well it was new 94 years back but but uh, when i went there then i saw that uh, the way the spirit has uh, been kept and the way they've moved with the times it's it's still very new moved with the time as in it's it's fine to say that because when you go in it's it's frozen with time that you know when you when you walk in you feel like you walked into an episode of rk lakshman's rk narayan's uh, malgudi days which is used to show on doordarshan uh, when we were kids now uh, you feel you've walked into one of those cafes over there and and you know the south indian uh, folks of various ages sitting there more men but they were also on sundays families and women and kids sitting there and sipping their um you know filter coffee and and having their idlis and dosas and all that and 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 uh, and, and there's no air conditioning when i walked in in the evening it was a bit dark also it was it was as malgudi days as it gets but but i was in mangalore uh, not not uh, tamil nadu so um like i said ganesh uh, is a fourth generation owner he's been uh, running it but the cafe uh, new taj mahal cafe goes back to 1926 so new was 94 years old but but i think the way they've kept it up in terms of hygiene taste um the, you know everything uh, makes it still pretty new very very young at heart and i think that that's uh, a lesson i mean i mean that's the thing about uh, all these places which i'm talking about in food across india i mean you might not find them in too many lists so i had written an article for cognitast on on uh, mangalore and it was there on my list but uh, but otherwise these places don't necessarily get into too many lists or win too many awards and uh, stuff like that but they don't really care because in a non social distance era it is very difficult to get uh, tables at places like that and when you go in you you have to share a table and and stuff but when you go in you will see that almost everyone knows each other everyone knows what to order the waiting staff know that the people um you 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 would be a stranger when you walk in but at the end of the 3 days that i spent in mangalore i think i was also a bit of a regular over there because i'd keep going in at various points to uh, snuck in a bite well like i told you in the in the first evening i met uh, vikram bondal and 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 there he is like let me let me uh, sort of do a little swipe of my phone uh, swap of the camera that that's that's vikram bondal later uh, having the garbar ice cream he's a big fan of it uh, and and that's uh, what we had over there the mangalore uh, buns and and that's the thing about the mangalore bun the mangalore bun is and 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 you pronounce it as buns you know spell it as buns always apparently like plural as vikram told me so but it's not a buns it's it's not like a western bun or a sweet bun or something like that it's it's made with a uh, refined flour and uh, uh, and and banana dough and and it's deep fried and and slightly fermented and and inside is it's hollow let me show it to you again and uh, later i had it once at a place uh, in mumbai at uh, ranbir city place and they said that the older the bananas are the better it is so so the here's your uh, so vikram uh, who himself looks like a bit of a uh, mysore buns a uh, very sweet guy i had a lovely time uh, chatting with him and i think that our coffee together though he's having the garbar ice cream at a place later uh, set the mood for my stay in uh, mangalore and the love with which i was uh, welcome so so this is how it looks and uh, when you when you tear your way through it uh, then this is the dough and and the banana and maida thing so it's soft slightly sweetish you can get the flavor of the bananas and on and on the top it's it's crisp i won't say it's crunchy but it's crisp but inside it's like really tender really really is a sort of thing which is a warm hug uh, and and remember it was my first bite in mangalore and and such a lovely welcome and they gave a little chutney uh, with it and i'm going to take you um, 
uh, to the top of uh, and that's Pradeep. I was telling you about Pradeep. Uh, more on, on on him later. But okay, so this is what people go to Taj Mahal Cafe for the most. It's the filter coffee. Now this is not Ganesh Shinai, but this is a gentleman who's been making coffees for ages over there, or should I say filter coffee? And look at the look uh, look of concentration and um, you know he he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. And and people tell me that uh, the biggest draw uh, to new Taj Mahal Cafe in Mangalore is the coffee, the filter coffee. In fact, um, Ganesh Shinoy, uh, if you remember, I told you that he's a fourth generation owner. So when I met Ganesh, he said that every morning he goes there at the start of business to ensure that the coffee has been ground uh, to perfection, uh, to the that the formula is is consistent. And, and there are people who uh, buy the coffee from there as well, uh, which is the ground coffee. Uh, and, and, and them, including Pradeep, says that the taste is never the same when you have it at home. And, and I can imagine. I mean, see, see this guy. I mean, how can you replicate? Um, not me. <laughs> yeah, see, see him on my computer screen. How can you replicate this uh, expertise, this, this confidence at home? And also, I believe that uh, a certain uh, impact also comes in from bulk making bulk cooking of coffee which which you can't really replicate uh, at home so uh, that was my first uh, encounter at the new Taj Mahal cafe when Vikram and I Vikram Bondal and I met in the evening Vikram uh, works in IT from what I understand uh, but he but he's crazy about uh, films and and he tweets primarily about uh, films and uh, about food on on Twitter and and that's how we got along and uh, in a lovely evening like chatting with him getting to learn uh, getting to know about Mangalore from his point of view uh, as I did later from the various other people whom I met uh, getting to know about his favorite foods and, and like I told you there's also the, the the Garbar ice cream which he took me to have uh, later though it was invented at a place called uh, Udupi uh, in Udupi and, and I went there later when I when we drove to Kundupura to have the uh, ghee roast uh, chicken ghee roast at Shetty lunch home and they're supposed to be the ones who uh, invented it but uh, sipping on that hot filter coffee and then having that uh, Mysore buns and chatting with Vikram a friend from Twitter and and looking that buzz around that evening buzz at about you know 536 and when it's cloudy it's rainy and, and the sun is slowly saying goodbye and, and dusk is setting in it was such a such a wonderful uh, uh, welcome uh, to Bangalore uh, to Mangalore and uh, we went back again so like i told you um, pradeep landed rather late and and then next morning uh, or the morning after we decided to go uh, and and have the breakfast at uh, uh, you know taj mahal cafe and and let me show you what all we ordered because pradeep is not a man who believes in half measures and and uh, you know so whether we went to machili or whether we went to the, the catholic uh, place later you know, pradeep or, or shetty ghee roast uh, for, for the gyros in Kundupura, like Pratip would keep ordering lots and lots of food. So let me show you what all we had. This is a picture which I took from there, a tabletop picture. In the center is the tupa dosa. There's the um, kebab, the jige jige kebab, if I remember right, which is a breadfruit kebab. Um, there's a puri. Then there was uh, more stuff. There was the uh, fonas mulik, which I think is the jackfruit fritter, a fritter, very nice. Tupa dosa means uh, fried in ghee. And I had one later at Karthik, uh, which is very famous for his uh, South Indian filter coffee as well. And the Tupa dosas were very different at both places. I love them both. And and look at the alu bhaji in the middle, which came with the puri. And and there was also um, the 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 biscuit roti, which is like a little uh, khasta kachori, which is which is lovely uh, as well. And uh, in in um, in in New Taj Mahal as in most of the other waiter in uh, places which I went to in Mangalore uh, and, and in Bangalore if you look at MTR or CTR they normally give you versions of coconut chutney uh, with the food they don't really give you sambar uh, and, and I did try out the sambar uh, over there because they say that the sambar in uh, Mumbai is sweet because it's UDP influence so I asked for some sambar and the sambar in New Taj Mahal is not sweet because I believe the family which runs it is of uh, Konkani origin and therefore their sambar is not uh, sweet but uh, when I had it at a place uh, um, at Udipi near the temple where we also had the Goli Bajje we had it at New Taj Mahal but having it in the evening fresh at Udipi was even nicer 
there the sambar was was sweeter so uh, let me show you again um, pradeep and me and and that's on a sunday morning at new taj mahal i think <laughs> we had the uh, you know the table uh, sort of fully occupied with all the food we ordered and and we got a nice table by the window and and at various points i would step out from the hotel and bump into pradeep having a filter coffee over there or sometimes i'd go by myself for a bite and and we got all the food at one go so that uh, you know we could uh, do a nice tabletop uh, video so um let me tell you about some of the other food uh, which we had over there so you must definitely have the filter coffee goli bajje is nice uh the ma mangalore buns of course but but buns puri but you get that only in the evening tupa dosa you must have that the fanas molik was very very nice the jackfruit fritters and the biscuit uh, roti which was like a thin khasta kachori let me show you some of the other places which we um, went to in the trip uh this is um, from sagar ratna in the ocean pearl it's a it's a chain uh in delhi in fact and and they run uh, the restaurant in the in the hotel uh and and uh, yeah mangala bar and restaurant where we went and had some catholic food and the pork buffet was beautiful over there and um, some really nice place family run kundupur of course uh, you know uh, having the kori gashi at a place called sadanand on the way i've had it first at uh, places like modern lunch home in in mumbai but it was interesting to have it in bangalore and what i've told is that everyone has their own version of the gassi or the curry Uh, there's a place I I told you which we went to in uh, UDP, which is called Mitra Samaj, and uh, people tell me that the thing to have there is the masala dosa. We were rather full, so we had the goli bajje, and and the filled the coffee, and and that's as close as we can get to religion. Ah, uh, this is uh, the original uh, garbar ice cream, which is uh, um, which we had at uh, at a place called Diana at UDP. which is supposed to have invented it to i i like the one at pabba uh, in mangalore uh, much much nicer and uh, then where else okay so this is the famous um, chicken hero so oh my god is so good so good at shetty lunch home in kundapur and they're supposed to have invented it so there's a picture in the kitchen i got to go in the kitchen how how nice is that how nice and and the, and what you can see the gentleman here is frying lady fish and and that lady fish was also so brilliant so so this is where he was getting the hero starter ready and and the lady fish was so nice it was crisp outside we bite into it it's it's like butter and then we had the the chicken korma and the ghee rice which was again a bit like a biryani in in kolkata light not too much of masala anda paratha and shetty lunch home a lot like the kolkata moghlai paratha or or the baida roti of uh, mumbai or the martabak of malaysia so it's funny to see how how food travels and uh, yeah so so uh, that was me that's my happy mangalore <laughs> face and and you know i'd i'd gone to mangalore with a uh, lot of high expectations and and with a lot of interest to get to know more about the food of a city and, and a community which has influenced the the food scene of the city where i live in now so much mumbai and and uh, it was a short trip but thanks to the company i had with pradeep and and then people like vikram or shia shetty whom i met uh, later and 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 so many reader suggestions we had some uh, lovely food over there and i and i fell completely in love uh, with the place and i would strongly urge you to uh, uh, when you can to plan a food trip to mangalore and and go to udp as well go to uh, go to uh, kundapur it's it's all a drive so about 4 hours up and down monsoon's a nice place to time to go there of course people will tell you that in monsoon you will not get uh fresh uh, sea fish and and we were not too worried about that because in mumbai we get seafood through the year and and uh, we got to have monsoon specialties when we went to mangalore during the rain so the fishing had stopped but we could still have shellfish small prawns or at this place called machli where we had the gar uh, the the gaboli which is um, uh, fish roe a uh, ghee roast oh my god it was, it was one of the most memorable dishes of that year the ghee roast uh with with gaboli and and then we also got to have something called uh, the garbar um or or basically this mushroom which which grows only for a couple of weeks uh during the monsoon so you know uh, you might often go to a place thinking that this is not the best place to go to uh but but uh you know you can always find out interesting things because people in a city or a place always eat right and and they will always find something interesting 
uh, during the period. Uh, if you go to uh, Mangalore to eat, then there is uh, no way you will miss uh, eating at New Taj Mahal Cafe. And and if you ha- if it has the same impact on you as it had on me, then you will uh, probably keep going back uh, doing your trip like I did. And it's it's really nice uh, stuff. And do have a tupa dosa for me. Do have the uh, fanash molik for me, the jackfruit fritter, if I've pronounced it right. If you're in the evening, have uh, uh, you should definitely have the ma- mangalore buns for me, buns puri. And, and also don't forget to have the biscuit roti kachoris for me and coffee. My God, that filter coffee. I'm, I'm going to now quickly scroll, scroll through to see if anyone has any uh, comments or questions. Uh, if you have any questions on mangalore food, if I can answer, then I'll be happy to. If you have any comments on New Taj Mahal Cafe, uh, I'd be happy to. Otherwise, I'm going to uh, end this broadcast. Uh, the drunk monkey has put in a lot of fights. So he said the food looks absolutely amazing. Well, um, I'm, I'm still waiting if you've got any comments or questions on Mangalorean food. Um, like I said, uh, or to sum up this episode uh, of Foodocracy India, where I use this hashtag to talk about uh, my favorite food places or food experiences uh, from across the country. Today I spoke to you about a place uh, in uh, Mangalore, Mangalore with an M in, in uh, Karnatak, not to be uh, confused with Bangalore with a B or Bengaluru. And, uh, and, and it is particularly of interest to you, uh, that uh, uh, of, of me, because there's been a strong influence of the food uh, in, in Mumbai by the uh, Mangaloreans and the Shetty community. And uh, therefore, um, I wanted to go and uh, sort of explore. And I went there two years back during monsoon and an absolutely f- fantastic time. And I spoke to you about a bit of the places I went to. But, uh, but this uh, episode was more about the new Taj Mahal Cafe. And... Um, and, and, and the wonderful experience which I had over there and that is where I had my first meal and it made me fall in love with the place uh, as well as the city and uh, how new is new like I said it was invented and in, sorry opened in 1926 uh, uh, so which means that it's, it's 94 years new uh, this year so I've got some questions or comments coming in uh, Roshan Thadani just of what Mangalore food is to you list of what Mangalore food is to you if you're looking at a list you can go to my blog site uh, blog post at finally chop Pritam Roy, the buns look amazing. My God, man, they were. And, and with those coffee. There's a place in, in Fort uh, Mumbai where you can go and try it. Uh, so, so that's also a nice place. Uh, Suhas Padel is saying, as a Mangalorean sitting in Bangalore, I had a hard time hearing about buns. And, and that made me super hungry. So um, I, I hope you get them in Bangalore as well. Eat with Fritz, uh, which was the name of the restaurant you visit in Mangalore for fish. So, so there's a lot of debate over there. There were two, three places to go to. And, and we went to a place called Machili, which is the comparatively newer place the, than the other more popular one. Uh, but it was really lovely, especially the gaboli or fish roe ghee roast, which I was talking of. We also had prawn ghee roast and fish curry and fish fry and all that. But, and Suhas is also saying that he likes the goli bhaji with filter coffee. That's nice. Goli bhaji, you have to have fresh. But the goli bhaji we had at Mitra Samaj at UDP was, was uh, spectacular. So, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, joining in. Uh, Thokal Sujay is saying you get it in Rupali as well. Uh, I'm guessing that's in uh, Mumbai. And uh, I, I'll, I'll have to look up the name of the place I'd gone to in Fort. It's new something or the other. Achha, Thokal is talking about uh, Pune. But but thank you for joining me on a now more humid, as you can see, I was perspiring a bit. But when I started, it was nice, wet and romantic in Mumbai. And it took me back to Mangalore two years back. I hope you enjoyed this and, and uh, do keep watching for more uh, Foodocracy India broadcasts. I'm going to save this on my social media. You can catch it uh, later if you couldn't catch it in full. And, and use the hashtag to talk to, uh, about your favorite food places as well. So uh, this is Kalyan Karmakar signing off from Bandra in Mumbai after bringing you a story of Mangalore in uh, Karnataka. Thank you so much. <laughs>